one to three. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be again from the New York City LAN, Starcon, NYC LAN. Upper right-hand corner, we have Sugo starting as the brown Protoss. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Tim starting as the teal Protoss. Casted this a little bit out of order because <clears throat> this is, I think there are a number of players that were seated because of their, they're just, were strong players. And I think it was also to allow certain other people to get more games, might have been. But I believe Artosis, Striker, Jayun, Gypsy, Sugo. I'm not sure if Raz was seated as well. But I do believe that was part of... So basically you had upper, uh, one additional bracket opportunity to be played. And I think that was to give more opportunities for people to play additional games. So it wouldn't just be, oh, you ran into Gypsy and then you immediately ran into uh, Artosis and goodbye. Uh yeah, to allow players to get a few more games. <clears throat> anyway, Sugo is one of those guys that I believe was seated. So Tim ended up winning round one. And technically, this is still round one of the upper bracket. Because this is going to be Sugo's first game. So I'm not even sure how to, like, say... This is still upper bracket right here. So Tim has won a game in the initial rounds. And now he's advancing to face Sugo. Tim is a very strong Protoss player. However, Sugo is absolutely incredible. I'm actually really glad that I found these replays because I didn't think I had them. I'm hoping I, I have more games of Sugo to cast. Sugo is a fantastic Protoss player. He doesn't participate in a ton of tournaments and whatnot, but he's one of the top American Protoss. Is very, very strong. It's actually funny because I feel like Nesh and Sugo are two guys that... It's kind of like Nesh is the Terran of... Nesh is the Sugo of Terran, and Sugo is like the Nesh of Protoss, where they're just incredibly strong players. If they're in really, really good shape, they could take nearly any tournament in North America, but very few people know about them because they don't get a lot of exposure, uh, either on Twitch or in BSL or other locations. I'd actually love to see Sugo run and uh, do some BSL runs, because I think he'd have a lot of success. Anyway, this is going to be PvP at its finest. We have an initial zealot being constructed. It looks like no initial zealot here from Tim. You have to be careful. I've learned this tip. You have to be careful dropping the cybernetic score like this because sometimes with Protoss going 12 Nexus to start with a forge follow-up, what you can end up doing is actually, and oh, it looks like we saw it from Sugo, same thing on the other end. You can sometimes accidentally end up giving an opportunity for your opponent to box, uh, box you in. Tim, maybe a little bit of tournament nerves right here. Zealot able to get that probe kill very, very rapidly. It could also be he knows he's going up against Sugo in particular. He'll have a bit of a army advantage going Dragoon first, but losing that probe and holding also we'll see if Sugo... Yeah, he's going to open up two gate. I was thinking he's going to open up... I'm, I'm assuming two gate Reaver here because he is opting to do something that I've seen out of a lot of Protoss, which is don't send an initial probe scout and instead scout with your initial Dragoon. Because if if you see the Dragoon down here, you can pop through, take a little bit of damage on the shield, confirm that it's a natural expansion, and then you're basically saving yourself a probe. And that's actually a sizable economic advantage right off the bat. <clears throat> I'm not sure what the exact resource differential is, but basically doing this right here, so able to check that natural expansion, find nothing there, and as a result, that reduces a large amount of the probable build orders, and especially if you're following it up with Two Gate Observer, gives you a lot of opportunities to make build order decisions that are going to be slightly ahead of your opponent. Range upgrading on both ends, so basically mirrored builds, but despite Tim's fantastic macro, are we seeing three? No, okay, we are seeing Two Gate Robo. Probe slightly ahead for Sugo, and he's probably, especially with that initial information he gleaned, going to be in a pretty good situation because he didn't see a lot of Dragoons flooding out right there. He didn't see more Dragoons than he was expecting. And if he had only seen one Dragoon, actually might have even wanted to press up into that natural expansion to confirm that it wasn't, and he looks like he's going to move actually back out again. I think this is more to confirm the build order to make sure that it's not three gate more than anything. Tim 
pulling back. Sugo with that fantastic reaction, immediately able to pull with that high ground. Blindness able to pull back, and now he's got a nice, comfortable position here up on the high ground. He is just, I think, a Dragoon ahead right this second. We are seeing two Gate Robo on the opposite side as well, but again, because of that initial probe difference, Sugo just slightly ahead. These Dragoons moving up on the low ground, getting some misfire, now running into a dangerous situation where they're eating a lot of free fire uphill. Tim trying to retreat and get the misfire on the low ground to his advantage. He is going to be able to maybe get that Zealot. He's taking a lot of damage on his way out, his lost Dragoon. This is now four plus a Zealot versus four. Tim being pushed all the way back, so lost a Dragoon already. We, did, we are seeing two Gate Robo initial OBS being constructed, and I expect to see a Command Center, a Command Center, a Nexus immediately after this. Six Dragoons, and Tim moving right back out to try to see some of that map control. Nice aggression. Two Dragoons, however, right there. Amazing timing from Sugo to engage this, and you can just see how sharp Sugo is. Tim looking to get some additional high ground advantage and instead being pushed right back. This is extremely high level. Tim is no slouch. This is extremely high level. PvP right here. Looks like we had Observatory into Robotic Support Bay because of a lot of the initial uh, engagements that did not go favorably for Tim. It looks like he wants to try to get a Reaver and a Shuttle out a little bit earlier, especially because he's getting evicted out of his natural expansion. He's paused probe production <clears throat> in response to this, wants to get a faster Reaver and apply counter pressure to get that natural expansion up a little bit earlier. Robotics Facility is up on the opposite end. But I believe, yeah, you already have an Observer out. It's holding on position right this second, just in case there were DTs. And as soon as that DT timing around, I think it's 7.30? <clears throat> Don't quote me on that. It's been a while. Uh, when that DT timing shifts, we'll see move up. In the meantime, Tim moving down before that Reaver's in place, feeling like he's got superior Dragoons and getting a lot of kills. Some nice micro, even able to box one of those Dragoons back. And all of a sudden, Sugo, well, way behind and in retreat. He's going to need that Reaver, actually potentially, which is building right this second to be on the low ground to even keep from getting boxed out of his natural expansion. A third gateway getting dropped, the Reaver on its way, and it looks like Tim wants to play pressure off of this. Sugo, is he still going to drop the Nexus? He's saved the 400 resources, still dropping the Nexus as those Dragoons are peeling back, but we've got seven versus more than seven, eight and reinforcements coming, plus that Reaver. So Tim is actually going to have a strong opportunity here in game one. You got the two Dragoons to the high ground. That Observer still pinned just to respect that DT play. So now moving forward, Reaver getting some initial shots and they're having trouble engaging on the high ground. And with those initial two, it looks like a probe actually being sent out as well just to scout the, the situation. That single shuttle can be a huge advantage, but it looks like there's still not a lot of troops. Tim is going to press this at some point, but wants to get a little bit more of a sizable numbers advantage. And wow, decided to get aggressive on the high ground with that Reaver. is going to end up losing that Reaver as a result. However, Sugo misdirecting his own Reaver and ends up losing it on the front. He wanted to, I think he had an attack move, wanted to pick something on the edge, wasn't expecting the drop. And that is a lucky break for Tim because that could have been disastrous. So Sugo ending up a little bit, he's not out of the woods yet because this is still three gate pressure that's coming his direction. A lot more troops on the high ground. The Observer now peeling forward to get a good look. And Suga really needed to preserve those troops in a defensive stance, has that Nexus up. If Suga can hold at this stage, he is going to end up economically ahead. He's still at this stage three workers ahead, but he's still running off two gateways versus three. He's tacking on those two additional gateways. So the window for Tim is about two and a half minutes here to where he's going to have superior numbers on the ground to maybe press things up. He's got two additional Zealots in the Reaver. I love this style of play where he's going to try to force a split of Sugo's forces where some are going to have to come back to the main and if he overcommits troops on the defense here, if he commits nothing, he ends up losing probes. How is that a dud? No, it's not a dud. Huge explosion right there. Now Tim all of a sudden has the economic lead, but you can see Sugo wisely not dedicating any additional troops to defend this because he recognizes with the Observer on front, if he retreats from this natural expansion, he'll end up losing on both fronts. So just sending a handful of Dragoons to deal with that Zealot, repositioning, Tim cycling back around, supply counts dead even here, but now with two bases up and better saturation, this is an opportunity for Sugo to start sneaking back into it. We do have a Nexus dropped at the natural, Dragoons planted and 
using that observer fantastically, the observer trailing the movement there of that shuttle, it looks like Tim recognizes that that shuttle has in fact been spotted. And so not going to risk a drop. He did get all of those probe kills earlier, but right now it's Sugo's moment where he's got this time where this Nexus is in place ahead of Tim to go ahead and get additional probes out. Looks like a Citadel of a Dune dropping down. We'll see if that turns into DT play or if it just turns into High Templar play. Tim does have a degree of map control here with the concave outside of Sugo's base, but Sugo now has four gateways up, ha is mining off two bases. He's dropping his own Citadel of a Dune. There's an opportunity for him to rebuild and regroup and press out. Five supply lead, the observer seeing that Tim has vacated the front. Tim actually gonna go ahead and back off as his own observer moving up to nine o'clock location. He's up, I believe two reavers and a shuttle. Never mind. it looks like it's just about dead even right there. And so let's see if Tim at this stage with a more defensive slot moves up to go ahead and grab his third. It looks like Sugo checking that third and is sending a probe that direction to go ahead and play a more macro oriented three base play. We do have a shuttle speed upgrade here from Tim. He's just tacked on that fourth gateway. So we'll be able to match production. He's actually gotten ahead in the overall probe count. Zelt leg speed just starting. And Sugo starting to move out. He's got a probe that looks like going to drop a pylon, but it looks like he wants to go ahead and check the front for Tim. If he gets a really good exchange and feels comfortable, might turn that around into a third base, but right now just wants to go ahead and look at the troop count on the front. No observer defensively for Tim. And the observer just trying to stay on the edge. She's the two reavers in position and all the dragoons fanned out. So I don't know that Sugo is going to want to push into this. Does have that probe waiting. He's not saving the resources here. Now the observer, oh, that's unfortunate for the delayed observer tactic. I'm not sure that was an intentional tactic right there, but now Tim also going to get eyes opposite direction and seeing the lack of reavers might actually provoke an attack here. We'll see. This is a lot of dragoons. The observer going to scout it up again. The reavers can take some free shots uphill. A single zealot marching out is going to go ahead and disrupt that 12 o'clock location. But in the meantime, the reavers that were missing, I missed a drop and wow. You look at the probe counts, a lot missing there. That's triggering a counterattack for Tim. He's unfortunately attacking uphill, but he does have the two Reavers as part of this army, where Sugo does not. So Sugo's going to have to retreat and regroup. And he's got to be very careful with that shuttle. It's currently under Dragoon fire. It's maybe going to try to unload it on the second uh, plateau. And Tim getting overly aggressive with his Reavers loses them. Now Sugo up two Reavers on the high ground. And Tim in a disaster situation, all of a sudden plummeting in supply as Sugo turning around, getting a lot of damage. And with that, just one little misstep right there, Sugo busting it wide open and pushing the counterattack. Now, there's no observer out here for Sugo. I wonder if there's DTs to potentially save the day. It doesn't look like we have DTs in production. So that might have been it. Tim able to pick off that shuttle with some nice focus fire on the second plateau. It looks like there is a DT making its way up to the natural expansion. This can be an equalizing factor right here. I see no observers here at the natural or the main. Are we even seeing an observer being produced? No. So a DT able to sneak in while that natural expansion is being breached. So this could shift the scenario where it's going to be one base versus one base and potentially an elimination scenario. So the DT now taking out probes left and right at the natural, but the natural has been shut down on the opposite side as well. And it looks like there is a, an observer with Sugo's army. So if Sugo can get another observer up and just blockade that ramp, he should be able to sail into victory right here. That Arc Templar is not going to be able to take down that Nexus. An additional Nexus is building. And with that, I believe Sugo has sealed victory. The DT being, yeah, being relegated to just sit on that ramp. Tim giving the GG and the capital GG. Amazing game, both directions. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for the raid, Urbmon. By the way, if you are a regular viewer of this channel and you are not already subscribed or following Urbmon on Twitch, you're missing out. You uh, you need to be on that channel. Up and coming Zerg, as proven at uh, this namesake New York land. I actually feel like uh, Urbmon... I, he was my dark horse, but he's definitely the breakout player through all of it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it.
going to move on to game two. Thanks for listening.